Welcome back, my friends, to the Predictive Playbook. We Before we started this, we were four, and now we are three. I think Tony Finn is coming back to the show. Somehow he uh, got kicked off. Got I'm lost. not really sure why. <laughs> um, couldn't have left his house by much because they would have pulled him over. But he'll be back. He'll be back. He'll maybe, be back. Maybe. And I said, maybe. Do you? Do you guys realize we went three and O last night? And and that's supposed to be something special. Three and O. I guess that's what special? I did last night. What I went three and O also. That's special. Yeah. So when the show goes three and O, then I go three and O. You know, listen, we're only as good as the picks we give out here in about ten minutes. And yesterday means nothing. <laughs> I mean, I, right? I can't even bask in the glory for like 10 seconds. You can if you want, but you're going to get sunburned. It's going to hurt. That's <laughs> uh, it. Well, right. look, at my, look at my screen in the background of Bitcoin. I mean, it, you know, it's on fire. Mm-hmm. Bitcoin's on fire again? Uh, no, but Steve Merrill and I are starting to get a little bit bullish. We did a, a show today, and we're uh, cutting down our shows, actually. We're doing like three or four five-minute shows. Uh, recorded well, and then I load them what? up instead of doing it live. Guess what? And it works a lot that's better. What the, that's what this show should, for me is going to become because I'm running out of time. I'm running out of every single thing. Everything. I'm run, I've, I've been out of Quaaludes for 30 years. <laughs> I can't. I got no Pablo. 30 I, years? I got, it might have been 30, three minutes. Three 30, minutes. 30 Tops. years. The only thing I got is Mexican bootleg Quaaludes. That's all. Oh, well, it's, it's still the same, I hear. Well, John, here in the East Coast, we have uh, things called everything you hear. In the East Coast, we have things called pharmacies. Yeah, I know. And then there's a there's a guy dressed like a doctor that that, uh, knows everything there is to know about drugs. Let me tell you a story that is so not sports related that it's crazy. It may even get me. uh, uh, I'll tell you this: I have some friends who live in a. This one's an extraditable country. They live in an extraditable country. It's, it's, it's close to third world, I think, as you can get. And if I told you where it was, uh, then those people who live there would also drive by and shoot me a few times on Twitter. But here's the deal. Uh, these guys have money, and they hired a scientist. And when they want something for the weekend to go party with, they just put their order in. The scientist makes it for them. Well, <laughs> they couldn't get quaaludes right even. Because it's so it, it's That's so pathetic. complexed that no wonder it was the goat of all drugs. <laughs> <laughs> and that's quaaludes. Quaaludes, 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 quaalude, methane, or quaalude, uh, something like that. I don't know what it is. Um, all right, on Jeopardy, I would say, what is Black Beauty? That's a that's a speed. That's a that's an that's oh. a that's a amphetamine. Oh, that's the opposite then. And it had a number well, too. Yeah. It was like Black Black Beauty three eighty six yeah. or something. No, that's a Quaalude seven fourteen. Roar seven fourteen. Lemon seven fourteen. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> don't, listen, and don't ask me how poor, I know these things. Poor Adam oh, has no clue to what we're true. talking about right now. <laughs> He's too young. <laughs> he I know. What, I literally know what Quaaludes are from Wolf of Wall Street. It's probably the first. Yeah. The oh, time guess what? And let me oh. tell you, people, people come. Listen, people come to me all the time and say that's Hollywood. That. No, uh. that's exactly <laughs> what it is. And I'm telling you, the it, the car deal is exactly, it happened to me. It <laughs> wasn't quite that way. I drove through a gate, a gated community. I thought I drove through the whole gate. And when I got home, woke up and my, my grandfather was from my grandfather in Sin City in, in Arizona. And he woke me and said, what the hell happened to your car? I said, what do you mean what happened to my car? I walked out there. I looked both sides, just ripped where I drove through the gate. And, and I said, Somebody, somebody must borrow my car last night. <laughs> the sure as hell wasn't me. And he said, "What?" I said, I "Well, it was wasn't. me. It was me, Grandpa, but it wasn't me." He said, "What do you mean?" I said, oh, "I got into your bucket of quaaludes." Well, before we get to the sports, Adam hit a Did soft like spot with me, a sore spot. A sore. The spot? Wolf of Wall Street. Having yeah. worked on Wall Street for, and actually on Wall Street mm-hmm. for. A little bit more than uh, about 20 years, last position, chief currency strategist. Do you know how many people, when that movie came out, oh, John, John, uh, is that really how it was? Is that Was that your lifestyle? 
It, we know not that's not close. true. Close. John. Not even <laughs> close. It was not even close. But let me tell you, John. Not even close. That Not your lifestyle. But let me tell you, that was the lifestyle of my boys. That was exactly how they lived. What The guys that were professionals, that's exactly how they lived. New cars. Well, couldn't have, in the 80s, money was growing on trees. You know, it, it's like it couldn't. Well, that's it's true. Stupid. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I was on the institutional side, and that movie was the retail you, side. You they were, were the stockbrokers. Yeah, you were on no, the smart I was, side. Well, yeah, you're right. I was on the smart side because yeah. you didn't you didn't take uh, people – like one of my accounts was the Harvard Endowment Fund. You didn't take them to strip joints. You took them to well, a steakhouse maybe, maybe where you could smoke you a cigar. Maybe you should have. <laughs> no. They, they would have dropped me like a hot potato as an account if I would have How done do that. How do you know? How do you know? Uh, you just never crossed that line. What line is that? Because if I if I've never because uh, there's not a line. I don't know if there is a line I have not crossed. Uh, well, there's well, a few lines I haven't crossed. I, you know the old saying: "One time in college, I'm not proud of it." That line never. Okay, let's talk games. Come on. All right, here we go. All right, but The Wolf of Wall Street is not one of my favorite movies. <laughs> yeah, well, neither is Caddyshack too. Now, Wall Street, Adam, watch that one and then tell me what you think. That was more about what institutional side was, was all about. It was slow. It was slow compared to Wolf of Wall Street. Slow. Uh, information is the most powerful commodity I know. And it applies to baseball and it applies to NFL and applies to everything. It so, to um, everything. in baseball last night, to recap our plays, um, oh, the three of us terrible. came up with the Phillies. On our own in a live breakdown that was not planned, but we got a solid play and they won. You, <laughs> Tony Finn, how. came up with a tremendous analysis on the Tampa Bay Seattle game, and I do remember saying that you know what, one of those teams is going to score the posted total on their own merit, and Seattle did. Uh, and our no. third pick was no. uh, this going on? the Marlins. It was the angle of the day. It was the Marlins as a dog. Marlins, the Marlins. Yep. The well, fish, the fish, the fish, fish yep. eaters. So it's now our standards are set very high, Adam. Well, um, I was going to say it's a good thing I didn't come on yesterday because I took I took a kind of a bad beat on my one play. Uh, I had Diamondbacks plus one and a half, oh. and uh, oh. I got bit by the. Egg. I got bit by the, you know, it was a good, it was a plus price too. The plus one and a half was like you, plus one fifteen. You know that that is the, you know something, Adam? You're right. That's the nineteenth. That was only game. It's my nineteenth extra inning game this year. Nineteenth. And guess yeah. how many of those? Guess how many of those? Well, guess my record is. Probably uh, not two, very two good. and seventeen. Fifteen and four. Fifteen losses. Yeah. Four wins. Well, that's the thing. Like I, the way I bet, I mean, I'm I'm generally never. I never lay minus one and a half, and I rarely bet. Well, I, I pretty much bailed out on totals at this point because I've always been yeah. more of an under better, and there's yeah. like l- really no incentive to bet a full game under anymore. Well, so I don't. I would like, disagree with you on that, but I understand that feeling. Do, I know you that. You know what feeling, I mean? Though, like but... I probably lost. I probably lost four or five. It's probably the difference between me being up or me being slightly down in baseball yeah. this year. Um, how many times I've either lost an yeah. under in extra innings or lost with the plus one and a half in extra innings. It's just like – Yeah, I don't play plus one and a half. I play – I'm the opposite of you. I'm contrary to you on that. I play minuses. I don't play pluses. But uh, – Yeah, um, I mean – I. I yeah. On the road, like I could never lay minus one and a half with a home team. It's just like goes. Against I don't. My home. I never. You don't do that, and you're a yeah. smart man. You don't lay but, one and a half with a home I'll team. I'll tell you, with, with these, with the extra innings rule, if you've got minus one and a half and you've got the away team, you're very live still. Like, oh, well, it's just, it's extra innings are different. Yeah, extra innings are much different now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it, I mean, like, it, yeah. It used to be if you get if you got to extras with plus one and a half, like it, it was going to be a really bad beat if you lost. But now, I mean, you you almost like I I kind of knew I was like well, we, we got to end this in regulation one way or the other. I I was pretty certain yeah. that San Francisco was going to come up in the top of the tenth, and they were probably going to score more than one, and, and that's exactly what happened. Yeah, and I so. I'll tell you this: you this is one thing is I once I've lost. I never. I typically rarely say another word about it. I mean, it's go, it's done. It's guess mm-hmm. what? 
I, I am that's that's oxygen that I probably should spend. But then I, that's been a long time coming too, uh, Adam. So uh, yeah, I, no, you know, I didn't. Yeah, I didn't intend yeah. to talk about it, but you know, we started well, I understand. talking about yesterday. And then, I just told you about know. my extra innings, yeah. which I don't. I don't. You know, it's 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 not it's not what I like to have happen, but it happens. And, and, of course, there was a million runs in the game, and, and I kind of, like, wanted to fade to Galbani there. And, and there were, if I had done it basically any other way with, yeah. like, any other over, there was, yeah. you know, 19 runs in the game. So, you know, yeah. but we'll, we'll try to get back tonight. I'm on – listen, I'll tell you this. I'm on a 15-1, and 15-1 and one totals run right now in baseball. Yeah, it's true. That's awesome. And, and I play a lot of unders. So – and I'm a, one of those guys who – People will ask me, why do you play more unders than overs? And I say, well, I play what I like. I play what makes sense. But mostly, I play unders because I'm a winner before the game even starts. Yeah, you're a, you're a winner until you're a loser. With an <laughs> yeah, well, you, they got to beat me. Yeah. They got to right. beat me. And, and, uh, and um, but we talked about this yesterday, Adam, too. We're talking about last year. I thought, I thought bullpens were. I thought they'd done a. I thought they were more productive or more effective, efficient this season. But according to John's NRBQ database, New Rhythm and Blues Quartet, it Python. is not it's true. Python, Python, that is the correct. P, think of it as uh, letters of a, of a radio station. P Y T H O N. We are live broadcasting on P Y T H O N. I'm I'm on NRBQ. See, I kind of agree. Even though the numbers might say one thing, I kind of agree with Tony. But here's my spin on the whole bullpens. It's, um, I think the the front end relievers in a lot of these bullpens are like almost unhittable in a sense sometimes. Whereas it, they're just not that deep. So because you have so much swing and miss now, um, these guys are clearly making their money off of like the mediocre starters, the mediocre relievers. So I think. Bullpens, you know, you get like the the top two or three guys in each bullpen that have the sub one whip and and the really nasty stuff. They'll go out there and you have no chance. But they go out, they'll walk three and just tease you. They walk three guys, then they get their outs. Right. Um, um so I can like, name. I won't. Men- I won't mention their names, but um, you go know. ahead, mention a name. But but the whole oh, thing is the whole thing's just skewed anyway because they they came with the substance ban and it's just like baseball's been well, really it, tough this year in my opinion. Oh yeah, listen, it's been tough. It was tough last year, I thought for myself too. So yeah, I agree with you on that. And I I've done you know I do everything I can to kind of make adjustments and and I know this. Uh, it's not really why I've struggled. The reason I've struggled is simply because uh, that they 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 limited they limited access to players. And beat writers I have a lot of contacts with. That's how I get a lot of information. Just don't have it. They didn't have yeah. it last year, and, and it's it's starting to come back a little bit. But uh, but onward, upward, buddy. Onward, upward. We'll get them tonight. Mm-hmm. So you're gonna have a you're gonna have a free pick winner for the show. John I, uh, will too. I do, and if I you think. want, I mean, I, I I don't know what order you wanted to go in, but um, wherever you want. I'll, I was gonna say I have one play for tonight, and it's a four-unit play. So we'll talk. You know, we'll talk about it now. Sure, um, sure. Let it rip. Because I, I think, you know, I'm still looking at guys that I think have really struggled since the uh, the substance ban. If you, if I guess that's what we're gonna call it. Mm-hmm. Um, and Garrett Richards is one of those guys that I think was probably definitely using some sort of substance. Uh, it was probably making him a mediocre pitcher at best, or I guess we'll, we'll call him an average pitcher at best. Uh, but since he's just been atrocious, and the numbers would agree with that, even though even his season numbers, 5.15 ERA is, is bad. 1.66 WHIP is about as bad as it gets. I think if he, I think if he isn't, if it's not Garrett Richards and it's someone less known, you're usually getting shipped out with a 1.66 WHIP, um, and the ERA is. Probably I, I didn't calculate the exact URA, but it's definitely well over six uh, since that you know substance ban date um, back in mid June. So I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with the plus one and a half again tonight. I'm gonna take the plus one and a half on the Tigers. It's minus one twenty, and 
a big reason of that is, uh, you know, I, I've been trying to fade Garrett Richards. It's been working. He really has – he's really um, – hasn't really pitched well in, in, you know, probably since early June. I don't think he's made it six innings in a start since June 1st. Um, he's been consistently giving up, you know, three earned runs or, or more in, in most of his starts. Uh, and the Tigers are a very undervalued team at home. A um, friend of mine gave me this stat earlier, which I thought was really interesting. They've been underdogs 39 times in 54 home games. But in those 39 games, they're 25 and 14 against the plus one and a half. And when you wake up this morning, surprisingly, they're only six games under 500. Uh, obviously, a seven-game uh, seven winning streak out of the All-Star break uh, you know, helped, helped get them sort of back in striking distance. Uh, they split with Baltimore over the weekend, but they're also 30 and 24 at home. So they're, they're playing much better at home. And, you know, I've never been a Willie Peralta guy. I never really loved him in Milwaukee. I don't know that I'm, I'm pro Willie Peralta right now, but he's been decent so far this year. And he's only made two home starts. Um, so it's a small sample, but he hasn't given up a run in either. Uh, so I, you know, 1.12 whip. He's looked good, not so much the last couple starts, but I'm going to give him a sort of a pass there because he was on the road and he was on the road against teams that have seen him. So I think this could be a good spot for Peralta to, ba- to bounce back tonight. And when you look at the bullpens, you know, the Red Sox have trended down big time in the bullpen department. Uh, their bullpen whip coming into play today is 25th in the league. Uh, and now the Tigers are sort of notorious for having a bad bullpen, but they've been better since the All-Star break, and they've been better at home. So I think when I add it all up, I see a, an advantage starting pitcher-wise for Alta over Richards. Um, the Red Sox have lost four. You know, they got swept over the weekend by the Rays, lost four of five. I'm wonder, or I think it's five or six, actually. I'm wondering if, if this is finally the regression that, that I've kind of expected to happen with this Red Sox team. Uh, and then the Tigers just, they, they've been playing well at home. So if you're going to give me a run head start with the Tigers, I'm going to take it. Uh, plus one and a half. Tigers plus one and a half, minus 120. It's also a national TV game, which which kind of has me thinking that the the action on the Red Sox is a little inflated, which is probably why we're getting such a good price uh, with the Tigers plus one and a half at home. So I'm on the Tigers tonight. I'm, I'm taking the run head start, and hopefully I can avoid the extra inning disaster uh, like I had yesterday. <laughs> Very good. Very good. I like it. I think it's time for the uh, angle of the day for Major League Baseball. Unless, Tony, you want to talk about the PGA Tour event that starts Thursday. No, nah, we can wait. Well, I, <laughs> I, uh, no, nah, I really, no. Or unless, there is- unless it's. Tom Kite's involved. <laughs> Make sure you watch the 10-meter platform diving. Because guess how? Uh, he could be. He could okay. be. I, th- I think he's diminutive enough. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not sure what he, I'm not sure I want to see Tom Kite in the Speedo, but go on. Well, I mean, you're watching the sport, Tony. You're appreciating the sport, not how no, they're dressed. No, listen, I mean, when, I watch, when I watch sand volleyball, I'm not watching the damn volleyball. Okay? I'm not. But there's not much else to watch. Mm-hmm. I mean, those are the smallest uniforms in the history of any sport. And if you don't wear small uniforms, you will be fined because that sport is has a nice viewing audience and it's not to watch the volleyball. So I was thinking of a, a business plan of, of bowling leagues uh, uh-huh. using that type of uh, uniform to so, increase know, popularity. Yeah, not, you know, All right, here no, we go. Seven, I am riding the Marlins. 7-10 tonight. Tuesday, August 3rd, I'm on them again. I was on them yesterday on this show, and we are going to uh, we're going to do it again. So bet on home underdogs between plus 125 and plus 175. Can somebody tell me where that line is right now? Yeah, I, I'll look at it. Look the it game is there. taking place after the All-Star break. The host is batting 0-165 or last three games, which is very easy. So it is above that. Yeah, that actually... Five. Between minus 105. Yeah, I, 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 okay. Was there? Was Pitt, that who's, minus 207? Who's starting for Marlins? It's Nieder. I, I was going to say Nieder. I, I, was that all? All right. So they're, uh, I think they're doing another bullpen, Tony. Is that right, Rob? 
Adam? It would be. Yeah, they yeah. didn't announce for the longest time today. Right. They stick Nieder in there, so. That makes so sense. So I thought it was going to be Braxton uh, starting, but it's not. Um, that's definitely why the line's where it is. I was trying to figure that out, but looks like that's probably okay. the case. As long as we're not below 125, this betting system is still valid, and it actually gets better between 175 <laughs> and 200. Uh, but at the time I did this, it had to be done. So the host is batting just 165 the last three games, which the Mets are, are incredibly good at. And uh, this set of three parameters simply produces a 31-16 and 16 record for 65%. Winner is 20 7.8 units, which basically means the $100 better is made about 2800 bucks betting these three parameters when they become qualified and valid. Better yet, over the last three years, it's 21 to 9 for 70%. And I am not afraid of the betting gods anymore. And I'm 19 and 6, the last 25 in Major League Baseball for 76% winners. And uh, that's all I'm going to say about that. So I am on the. I like. The, I don't care if the Marlins are plus two twenty. Um, I, I I've been doing this too long. Like plus two twenty, you know, in a in an NFL football game. Uh, plus two twenty would be like plus four and a half, right? Plus five, not even that. Plus four and a half would be plus two twenty. So in the NFL, you ask somebody, are, are you uh, afraid of taking a favorite? At, at four and a half, of course they are. But in baseball, for some reason, anything over minus 200, the public thinks, oh, my God, that's a lock. That team's going to kill the other team. And it's not true. It's just not true. And the Mets can't hit. And until they uh, prove to me that they can hit for more than one game, I will take the Marlins with the superior bullpen, too, by the way. Yeah, great bullpen. Vastly Marlins, superior. If the Marlins could hit, then you'd have a, you'd have a game. Right. Well, I mean, it, it'll some of you'll win one nothing or two nothing. <laughs> Somebody will, yeah, yeah, they will. I agree. Somebody will win. But I, I have to well, say, Tony Finn, that was a great call on that home plate umpire with Tampa Bay last night because I well, would have never known that. And the bread box analogy bread box. that was yes. perfect, and it's exactly what you saw. If it was, uh, yeah, yep. That whole. Let me just say this so we can uh, answer that whole crew. By the way. That Jerry Meals crew is pitcher friendly. They typically crews uh, are, a, you know, basically, you know, burden bush, burden hand, uh, um, chip off the old block, that kind of, that, you know, the ad, <laughs> that ad. <laughs> what was the top? I mean, um, how about how about just under? You know, of course. My, I was probably, I think I bet the only game where the underdog didn't like win at a huge price. There was probably a couple others, but underdogs kind of cleaned up last night. And there was a yeah. lot of them that were plus 200. Yep. On the American League side, I think it was almost all of them. Yeah, Orioles. Uh, Seattle. Seattle. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Baltimore. Baltimore, there was one. That was just my free pick, uh, 3% play, Baltimore. Yeah, I mean, they, they get definitely catch a break not having to see Garrett Cole, and they're still a huge underdog. I, I mean, yeah. maybe. I don't, Jared, uh, Cole has uh, not been great. I Listen, if I see – you know, here's the deal. I, I hope Nestor – well, Nestor Cortez was was removed from the, right. from the right. starting role tonight. And the end, they uh, the starter now is uh, Gil. Uh, who is that? Is that, is that Gil? I, li- that it call, I call it Little Gil. It should be L Gil, right? It is. <laughs> little yeah. Gil. Um, well, Little Gil, I, I, I sent Nestor uh, an email and said, "Listen, Nestor, you need to take a picture of uh, of this right here. If sending an image of the line minus three hundred, I said, frame it." And go ahead and put a two dollar win ticket down there at FanDuel or wherever you can get your play in there close to, <laughs> to uh, Yankee Stadium. And then don't ever cash the ticket because you ain't never going to be minus three hundred again, ever. Yeah, I mean, that definitely seems even now. Well, in, in yeah. inflated on listen, the on little the little split. bit. Uh, yeah, no. Listen, Nestor, Nestor won for me last time out, but Little Gil. Uh, 
Lil Gil deserves to be minus 300 like I deserve to be pulled sane. over. Well, they bet him down to 230. <laughs> 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 yeah. Okay. That's encouraging. That's only that's only to Lil Gil. Had it been Nestor Cortez. The Yankees probably figured we're not going to march another lefty out there against the Orioles because Andrew Heaney got Yeah, slammed. I've said that for months now. If, if Listen, if, a le- if, a, if Baltimore has a fighting chance, if they have anyone on the mound that's capable of of holding the opposition to four runs or less through five innings, then they're live against a left-hander. You better believe it. Yeah, yeah and this the we- Wells is not terrible. I mean, he's only had a couple starts, but – you know, I, I want to say I feel like I got beat with him last week, and it was like a game where he just like kept throwing Miguel Cabrera fastballs down the middle. It, like, you know, if he had just avoided him, he probably would have actually ended up pitching a pretty good game. I think it was. I think that was his last start. Maybe was Tigers like five days ago, six days ago, and prior to that, I believe it was his first start of the of his her first actual start of his career, and I think he pitched pretty good. So obviously small sample size, but he, he kind of throw, he's kind of like a soft thrower. He really just like relies on location, but he's a lefty, but that I feel like doesn't, wouldn't you, couldn't you guys see that messing with the Yankees? Like that's, that's not typically the, the guy that they light up. I feel like, so if he has his like location down, he could pitch. Okay. And My humble they, opinion. I don't think they've ever seen him. I, I don't think they've ever seen him because he's only had like have, maybe three or four appearances. Him. Yeah, they have so. My humble opinion with the Yankees, and it's the same opinion that I had back in May, is that you get a pitcher on the mound that has a heavy sinker that generates a lot of ground balls on a good hitting team like the Houston Astros, for example, and the Yankees are going to lose. Be why? Because of the stupid launch angle. Guarantee you in the next couple of years that will be a fad and, oh, boy, that experiment didn't work. And like Tony Finn says about the owners, there was a launch angle? When was the launch yeah. angle era? I hope I didn't so, know John. that. I'm, I'm so sick of baseball, what it's become at this point. Like, I miss I miss actual baseball when teams used to steal and hit and run and, and you know, hit behind runners and, and try to, like, manufacture runs. This is just like... That's why, to, to be honest, exactly. I, prefer, I prefer watching the Korean game because they still actually play real baseball. If I was a pro baseball player, I would I would probably be uh, hazed like a fraternity freshman. But when I have a hole that you could drive 17 tractor trailers through because of a shift, where do you think I would hit the ball? Yeah, right. I mean... And and would I be uh, humiliated by oh uh, I was a wimp I hit it through that big hole that they gave me and I don't understand why it doesn't get done anyway well, you, have to, you have to be able to I, hit I, the ball I, through the hole you have to be able to direct the baseball and that's not taught anymore so either. you want to know yes. <laughs> right it, I, I heard, there's not one of thirty teams that have that as an organizational philosophy no. not one no. but no. I will say this Brooklyn Rob ball, if you the way up. if you go to the World Series of recent years it ball suddenly ball. shifts. And uh, the you know the Giants. Uh, when was the last time they won? Twenty. Yeah, that's the one that sticks out to me because if you watch 14, the highlights, 2014, right? fourteen maybe. Yeah, they were you, like on that either even or odd number. Even I think pattern. it was yep. 20, 20, 10, 12, and fourteen. But there that's go. going off memory. That there team hit opposite field the whole series, and I loved it. Absolutely loved it. Man on first, opposite field, and it didn't matter whether it was a left-handed batter or a right-handed batter. And why do you want to well, do that, the chat room asks? Because it keeps your bat in the strike zone longer so that if a yeah. guy throws a change up and you're fooled, you still have a chance to either hit it or foul it off. If you're using yeah. a launch it's, angle, you, the, you're not going to hit it. Not going to hit hitting is, Situational hitting is no longer even part. I mean, you don't you, – you, you don't, I don't understand it. I, I, like I said, I throw, I throw bitch pitches at managers all the time. <laughs> What is the what is the single the single most stressful situation for a starting pitcher or any pitcher in a game? It was it's supposed to be runners on a runner on third less than two outs, right? Like I mean that's first and third and any outs. Okay. Barry Bonds up. Barry Bonds up. First and third. Not bases loaded. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Nobody's in motion. And they don't do that anymore. 
I heard. Well, Bryce Bryce Harper sco- uh, stole second, was advanced to third, and then he stole home the other week. When was the last time that that stuff happened? Well, never. And it shouldn't have ever happened. First off, right, Bryce right, Harper because it, be, Bryce Harper can't even. You know, he he's no, he's not. He's not supposed to be stealing second, yet alone third or home. But that's the IQ part. He saw the the opportunity with a a, a right hander that was looking right at him. Mm-hmm. And I heard a I heard a cool um, I guess you could call it a stat last night when I was watching the Giants broadcast, and it kind of like makes a lot of sense. So the Giants lead, like by far lead the league in um, I I don't even know what to call it. I guess you would call it like shift effectiveness for lack of a better term like they they've recorded more they've recorded more outs via their shift than any other team in the league and so it's like kind of goes back to what john is saying that if teams are going to shift on on you but you can't you it's like theoretically these are pro hitters you should be able to you know hit around a shift but the Giants are shifting as effective as any team in the league. It's probably like not a surprise that their record is what it is at this point. Like it's less surprising now hearing that that they are where they are. Whereas like to me, coming into the season and then looking at what the Giants are, it's like mind blowing that they have the record that they have. I but, have two things to say on that, and it's a benefit of Tony Finn. And then I'm going to let Rob Vino have the floor to do his free pick. To be fair, because I realize I am talking way too much. But, Adam, if you factor out uh, that they are in the National League West and that the manager for the L.A. Dodgers is named Roberts, their effectiveness would probably be not as effective if the Dodgers didn't have a manager named Davey Roberts. And I say that tongue-in-cheek, but, Tony, it took me three hours of my database running continuously to find a positive thing for you to go to sleep on tonight about Mr. Roberts. Okay. He, and it applies to tonight's game. He donated, he, is, he bought Girl Scout cookies last week. <laughs> well, he, he bought Girl Scout cookies in a home okay. game. Good man. After allowing no more than one run in a win over a division rival, he is 36 and 6. What's that? But, what's that again? but what's, what's wrong with no, that no, no, trend? No. I, I don't know the trend was. I missed it. Say it uh, say. In home games, after allowing no more than one run in a uh, win over a right. division rival, he's thirty six and six. What's wrong with that trend is he has nothing to do with the win. He well, didn't, he's just with, sitting there. He just well, <laughs> what's wrong with the trend is I don't understand the trend. <laughs> After a game against a divisional rival, right? See, I, 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 yeah, I I know that. Here's by the, by where's one the, run. Where's the? Uh, where is the bookmaker involved in that trend? Yeah, yeah I kind he's of not. I kind he's of, not. I, I, that's the only trends I. That's the only trends I. But that's I've the only attention. good one I could find on Davy Roberts. Oh, well, I, I, well, guess you know, what? I that was nice of you to dig that up, Davy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Davey should probably give you part of his salary for doing that for him because uh, he retweeted not, me. He did yeah, retweet yeah. me. There you go. I was, I was appreciative. So, Rob Vino. It's it's your turn now to have the floor, and I promise to put duct tape over my mouth. <laughs> You're so, the host of the show. You do whatever you want, John. <laughs> oh, I'm I'm a different I'm a, type of host. I, I like sharing the wealth as much as possible. I am um, only going to pass it on to Tony Finn anyway because I didn't play a single game on this card tonight. I didn't find one. I didn't like one. The clients didn't get one. I haven't bet one. So there's nothing for me to talk about except for um, – what a bad day it's been for Andrew Cuomo, Jeff Gladney, and the Indianapolis Colts. Yikes! Those people are having far worse days than we are. Yes, so, sir. Um, I will. Yeah, I'll Wentz is in trouble, huh? Well, Wentz is well. The whole left side, left side of the line is gone now. So the, the sound you hear every five seconds is people ripping up Colts futures tickets. Because... Yes. Well, they shouldn't do that because there's a damn good chance you can probably get a you can probably sell it back to them right now for a couple cents. You know, well, yeah, I saw that does that takes back I, your losers. <laughs> what's that? There's a uh, there's a um a sports book out there that that like, yes, absolutely they do. Yeah, absolutely losers. It's almost it's like blackjack. It's like black, basically surrendering, and they'll give you a price on surrendering. You know, before 
Uh, especially before the regular well, season. Well, you know what, Tony? To that effect, yeah. I did surrender on a mm-hmm. Denver Nuggets future bet. There you go. Um, when Jamal Murray went down. And you know what? They gave me full price. I, I, oh, you wow. know, they I, gave you full price? Yeah, I, I, it was a 9-1. to one, I think they were plus 900. And they gave me every bit of plus 900 back. I did it within about an hour of when Murray was. Wow. They probably, um, they, you know, maybe they And there. they gave it to me. So uh, I was appreciative. But the Colts. Season over. I guess you can cash out. I guess if that's part of the sports book that you have, cash out price. Cash out. Well, they crypto. some some books do it. You know, some it's. Uh, I think it's good business to do that. Um, I just think it's good business. It's a, it's a uh, cool. It's, it's a cool wrinkle that some of these books have for sure. <laughs> There's um, one it, where you it, don't even have to worry about your plus one and a half, Adam. If you're up by four or five runs, they automatically pay you because you're up five runs in a game. I need I need to find that book. Yeah, uh, I just apparently. heard that the other night. I, yeah. I said, "What are you crazy? If a team gets up by five runs, bingo, you're paid." Yeah, there's I, a, there's I'm, certain I'm, things. I'm curious yeah. as to what is that? I I I've heard of that before. I thought it was like a, I thought it was like a book that was hard to access either in in this country. I don't know if it was like a European book or what it is, but yeah, it's a crazy gimmick. I'll tell you that. <laughs> get you hurt. It definitely is. But um. <laughs> You know, back to the complaints about hitting against a shift. I know that Rod Carew, Wade Boggs, those guys aren't walking through the door anytime soon. To, of course, they would be shifted anyway. But, you know, I'm just thinking in my head while you guys were talking about that. Dave Magadan is still a base coach in this league. And it must kill a guy like Dave Magadan who sprayed the ball all over the field to sit there and have to watch guys like, you know. I mean, and I'm a Dodger fan, but you sit there and you watch – Max Muncy, Cody Bellinger, any lefty with power just try to hit it through a five-man shift. They're trying to hit it through it yeah. rather than, you know. So it's no wonder the Giants, you know, lead the league in shift effectiveness. That's a great – Well, there's step. there's yeah. also uh, situational hitting and and, run, uh, and Dodgers are right there with the Pirates and the uh, uh, Diamondbacks on leaving – leaving runners in scoring position. You know what? Houston's up there, too. They're like fourth worst, but it's because they put so many that's guys right. on. They that, make and, a lot of and, contact, but they yes. put so many guys on. Base. Yes. Yeah, and that's, you know. listen, a lot of people argue that's why the Dodgers are there, too. However, you see, they strike, the Houston doesn't strike out. Oh, well. Right. It's, it, it, it's, it's like almost like a misleading stat in, in in some respects because I think I, I want to say for a long time this year and I, I would have to pull it up but like the the Rockies were way up at the top of the league in like that base run stat like basically like they so the Rockies cash in on their opportunities but they don't create many opportunities so it's like we well, obviously rather have you know you'd rather have well you would but you, you think yeah, like, but- it's like it's hard to look at it like obviously the Rockies aren't, Here, you know, aren't. A here's great what it doesn't team, tell so you, like, Adam. Here's what it doesn't tell you, and, and if you see it, I watch it every night and I watch it every day. Every time I turn on a baseball game, almost every time, every time is a little bit, uh, it's it's a little bit uh, uh, fatal. It's a little fatalistic. I mean, it's just not always. So that said, here's here's the deal. Um, you're up by one run. It's the eighth inning or seventh inning or eighth inning in there, and you get the bases loaded and nobody out. Um, and as Rob said earlier, the philosophy, listen, it's just not, a, it's not, it, it's, it is, it's money ball on steroids. Not only do you not bunt, not only do you not give away an out, you certainly don't sacrifice or try to hit a fly ball or you swing for downtown and the Dodgers will strike out three times with the bases loaded up mm-hmm. one run in the seventh inning with Jansen warming up. So I, that's that. Listen, that's something I would commit suicide over as a Dodgers fan uh, more than once, probably. You know, that's that's death in the worst way. It's it's equivalent to NBA basketball where some teams don't even allow you to shoot a mid-range shot. It's three-pointers or nothing. So that's, when these teams right. come up in AAU, yep. you know, they're 14, 15, 16. All they learn is to dunk or shoot a three. It's hard to correct that once you get – into the league and even at the you know at at rookie ball 
or a ball, wherever the ball players go once they're drafted. I mean, it's hard to correct that. All these travel teams are not teaching bunt sacrifices, situational no. hitting. Yeah, Nobody none. cares. These What's the three? Don't even what, know what, what are it the, is. What are the three most common results at the plate? Yeah, walk, strike, out, and run. That's <laughs> correct. <laughs> and there you go. But if you want to see a team, I mean, there, there's a couple out there that at least one aspect of the game and trying to build runs still exists. The Padres run like crazy. They run yep. more than anybody. They get a guy on first, um, and they're going. So I forget the Nash. There's an American League team. The, I as mean, well. the, Gi- the Giants executed a perfect safety squeeze up Teddy in extra yeah. innings last. That night. one. So it was yeah, like, that's that is that's. An, let me tell you right now. Was it a safety no, squeeze no, or suicide? Yeah, it, was, safe, safe, it wasn't safe. suicide. It was safety. He didn't. Okay. He didn't take okay. off until contact was made. And and the thing is, the bunt was hit was perfect. And even if you don't hit that bunt perfect, it's one of the most – it's almost defenseless. It's almost right. – you right. cannot defend that. And why it's not done more is because – two reasons. One, because Dave Roberts is scared to death to tell his star <laughs> player, his MVP, that he has to bunt because he's afraid of what he's going to be said to him when, when, when he gets back to the dugout. These uh, – you know, I'm not going to go there. But – Dave Roberts is is one of those guys that's really, as Gabe would say, the the players love Dave Roberts. He is a player's co- He well, is loved you. by his players. Here's the problem: my kids love me. I know they love me, um, but I didn't. Let me tell you something. I had a few of them. I had to kick in the ass. There's some I had to pat on the back. Some I had to tell them how good they were when they weren't very good. And there's other ones I had to talk to them and torture them to get them to listen. And that's just you. Sometimes you have to tell somebody something they don't want to hear. Yeah, and Dave Roberts at, does not do that. Well, it, yeah, it, that definitely has to be going through their heads. Just look at the whole Kevin Cash thing in the World Series last year. Like, you know, I don't know if I agree with him. I mean, Snell was pitching great, but like he managed the same way all year. You know, it was like absolutely a, a, a point of emphasis for him to avoid. Dave Cash doesn't give a shit what they what what the player <laughs> thinks about I think him. He died, Dave Cash. But like, what well, I'm saying know, is, like, yeah, there was a Dave know, Cash for the Phillies. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Dave. But what I'm saying <laughs> is, like, Kevin Cash had sorry, had, he ended up having to like endure a ton of criticism for that decision. Oh, that's okay. And, he didn't, and, he didn't it, care about that either. I mean, that's that's their job. To, to, you know, right, the, but I get you know, what you're you, saying. What I'm, I was yeah. agreeing with you, Tony. I, I do think yeah. it would be like yeah. a hard like, thing for them to do to, to go to a star and be like, "Hey, like we need you to, you know, we're just going to need you to lay one down here, even it, though it's it is, the right baseball." It is. Player. It's you know, yeah, it's I can, not just well, Dave Roberts. Right. It is. It's, it's not just Dave Roberts. I mean, there's not a Yankee no. who bunts. For what it's worth, there's really not an Astro who bunts. You can tell Alex Bregman, Jordan Alvarez, Jose Altuve go up there and bunt. None of them are going to do it. It's it's you know league wide. Um, it so, just apply to Roberts. There's but, there are two things for you guys. Yeah. It goes back. I mean, it's it's interesting to see how good the like a team like the Giants is because mm-hmm. they don't really have the you know they they kind of don't have those big type of, of star sort of ego guys on the on the team really, and they're you know that that shift stat and the fact that they're you know, still doing things like safety squeezes and stuff like that. I mean, it's starting to make sense why their record is what it is based on what they were on paper coming well, into the season. I listen, guess Gabe I Kapler is a Gabe Kapler is a different animal. He's closer to the A. I, listen, he is just listen. He's not afraid of anything. A player, a, nobody can do anything to Dave. He's not. I, I don't. I mean, Gabe. I don't think that Gabe's afraid of the general manager. I, Gabe. Goes to the you know he he beats you know he whatever you want to call it to to this different drummer and uh, he's uh he still looks like he could play you know and so, when he said when he talks I think they listen too don't you yeah, think it's because he is like the ultimate money ball manager which was not yes. accepted in Philadelphia and now. Correct. Yeah. Players are buying into it because unlike the NFL football coaches that look at their grid and oh wait it says to go for two. And it's not. He's actually showing them why they're doing what they're doing. Yeah. That's my theory. 
Yeah, but when right. you break them down at the core, guys, it's all cute to talk about that, but that team is number one in Major League Baseball. Over 52% of their runs come off of home runs. That's correct. Period. That's right. Story. That's true. And the That's next closest team is 47. And when you look yep. at the Giants lineup, you don't really true. see a batch of home run hitters, but you see these guys having career years. Where did Brandon yeah. Crawford come from all of a sudden? Buster Posey. Austin Slater, Buster Posey. I mean, yeah. there's a lot of old guys on this team. Longoria was having a good year before he got hurt. But yep. in all honesty, they're winning off of home runs, yes. and they're winning off of three pitchers, starting pitchers, Yes. That have been mediocre their entire career until now. Now yes. we're seeing Gosman start to fade a little bit. Yes. Adam talked about Di Sclafani um, betting against him last night, which I totally endorse because he's going backwards as time goes on. I, and Alex, what is about to go backwards? You know, Rob, I, I like, and I haven't even decided if I'm going to do it or not. But like, I, the Diamondbacks are probably a decent bet again tonight because Cueto's probably on that same. You know, you can get plus one and a half at like minus one ten. Bumgarner's been better. Like, Cueto's probably going in the same direction, too. They keep mixing – Giants keep mixing and matching well in their bullpen, too. Like, I, that's another thing that's just, like – it's not like they have dominant relievers, but they – he just – Kapler just seems to put, push the right buttons, like, every single night. It's just – it's weird. Yeah, because he's got a two-headed closer, even. He doesn't even really yeah. have a closer. Um, no. But everything's just clicked for that team. Yep. And some of those things, like the home run percentages, it just doesn't make any sense, right? There's nothing logical about looking down 30 major league rosters and saying, man, the Giants are going to lead the league in percentage of runs scored it, by the right. home run. It, it just doesn't make sense. And you wonder, at least in my case, I've wondered for three weeks, when is this going to wear out? When are they, When is it going to run out, this genie bottle or whatever it is they're carrying around? But they keep winning. They just keep winning. So, um I don't know. And in the case of the Seattle Mariners on the other side, guys, I think I saw last night that they actually lead the league in batting average with runners in scoring position. So somebody made the point a little while ago that uh, there's a team that doesn't create a lot of opportunities, but they score runs when they do. Seattle, well, again, I mean, are they really that good of a hitting right, team that they're, Rob, they're that aren't, clutch? Aren't they still last in the league in team batting average? Which means yeah, it's that, crazy, like, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you can find them anywhere from third to last down in about six offensive categories. If you just and you wonder, you say, scratch your head and say, "How does this keep happening?" But somehow it can't go on forever. Yeah, I would agree with point. that. And we'll have to see. Uh, well, Qu- and, and at Qu- at Qu- at Quato's defense, Quato's been. He's really their innings eater, their serviceable guy. Listen, he's got about a three, four uh, um, since April, since the end of April. I think he's at about sixty percent quality starts and, and pitching to a three, five year, which is listen to, for a Giants for the back end of what the top three guys have done. He's uh, and being the veteran and being able to do the uh, you know the Luis Tiant shuffle. And really okay. change tra- change angles and change release points. He's a uh, he's he's one of those guys that he's not. Listen, he's never going to wow anybody at this his age and, and what he has left. However, his savvy, his his IQ is is over the top. You know, so so he's almost a he's a guy that will come out of the pen. Um, he'll come out of the pen for maybe one batter uh, or a situational righty on righty when it comes to postseason time, and that's all he'll be doing. If he makes the roster, I have a question for you guys. Yeah, back back to the reason why we don't bunt at the major league level. They, they uh, well, I just kind of gave away the I gave away the example or the answer. Shit, uh, butcher boy. The the term is butcher boy. Does yeah. anybody know what that is? Butcher boy. Yeah, it's when you fake the bunt and you swing away. You're there. You go up about halfway. Pitchers used to do it all the time. Yep. There yeah, you well, go. Especially, it's, it's, listen, people, hitters used to do it too when the third baseman would come halfway down the line. Right. And make them think about it the next time. <laughs> you better believe it. And you know, in, in uh, NCAA softball, that's mm-hmm. legal. At the what collegiate is? butcher boy, oh. they can fake bunt. And you know how close those third basemen are? Yes. To whom? I mean, they're close enough to begin with. Yeah. But they're not, they, they never act scared. It's it's pretty it's impressive, actually. 
It's not a nuclear uh, weapon. All right. It's well, it's, it ain't wood bats, Tony, and it's aluminum bats, and that it's, ball, it's, even though it's bigger, it comes off that bat in a hurry. Listen, I would rather get hit by a softball than a golf ball. The bigger it is, the better to get hit by it, I think, unless it's a cannonball. Well, I, I take it back. Did you ever get hit by a golf ball? Uh, have I ever been hit by a golf ball? I got struck yep. by lightning by a golf ball. <laughs> oh, my God. Wow. I mean, that's like the movie The Natural. That's another, that's another story. <laughs> but guess what? I mean, I have to say this because I know, uh, my, golf balls. Yes, I know my I know my sons are watching this. I did get hit by a golf ball on Sunday. First time in my life. And I hope the guy really? who hit me, I hope the guy who's hit, hit me is listening. <laughs> but, Why? Oh, well, he, he hit a ball and you know, it, it wasn't well, a good shot. Listening, so he then he drops then, another yeah. ball. My yeah. drive is, of course, further than his, and I'm on the left side of the fairway, and I walk out to the end of the fairway there to get my ball. I have my back to him. Mm-hmm. All of a sudden, I hear click. Did you hear four? And you then it was like a, like a knife going through flesh. And luckily, my right foot was off the ground and it hit the back of my Achilles tendon. Mm-hmm. And initially, it swelled up like you can't even believe. But, you know, hey, I'm a gamer. I'm here today. Getting it done, right? <laughs> but I'll tell you, when it first happened, I thought, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Yeah, I, I've, I got, I've been hit in the head by a golf ball. It hurt. <laughs> that was the best place to hit me. I was wondering what that knob was on the side of your head yeah. all these shows. Well, Is that from that? Dr. Dr. Frankenstein tried to do a little, no. a little bit once. Yeah. All right, so... No, I've, been hit by, I've been hit by a lot of golf balls, uh, especially... Um, you know, after I've topped one at the driving range and I run out there to grab my ball so I can hit it again, you know, and then some bitches don't even stop. Them, you know, that's why. Well, they should have signs up there saying that this could happen if you venture out into the driving range well, area. There's signs, no right? sign that tells you that. They says, listen, beware, uh, beware of uh, Tony Finn crossing. How, how? Yeah. I mean, seriously, they should put up something. I mean, nobody, not everybody knows that. I mean, you can, kidding, not I'm everybody knows what a ball. shank is. Well, I know what a shank is, and she lives next door. <laughs> I do get nervous in the driving range where there's a guy next to me, and all of a sudden you hear the, the ball hit, and then it hits the wood side uh, two feet from where he's standing in a direct 90-degree angle the wrong way. Uh, that gets my attention. But, yeah, I was, well, I'm thrilled to death to say hurt. I got hit by a golf ball. It hurts. It, hurts it did. It hurt a ton. I didn't swear. I think because I was at my son's country club, did, and I, you ever, I really wanted you know to swear. That, didn't you know that when you swear, it really is, there's a uh, there's a, some endorphins that release, and it makes your pain less. Never knew that, so I should have just let it go and, instead That's of internalizing. I read. I read it. I read it. Must be true. Yeah. I'll double check with Rob Vino after the show because he he guides me. He <laughs> guides me. Balls? No. Uh, about the pain no level. Yeah, the cussing helps reduce pain level. It, it releases some, you know, when you're able to speak freely and, um, um, you know, and forever not hold your peace, you know, those kind of things. <laughs> I was I was walking around like some of those NBA players, though, that are, you know, acting like they just got hit by a truck, and then you watch the instant replay, and they didn't. But that that's I, – I was told that's how I looked. We don't want to get on there because, listen, Andy, the soccer player – and I will talk. <laughs> and I said these the basketball players, and soccer players, flop better than anybody I've ever. I mean, it's it's incredible. They need they, they're practicing for their second career, which is acting. Act. Yeah, it, it, it's sort of an art in soccer. It yeah. is. There's yeah. definitely yeah, there's some guys that are really good on the basketball court. For certainly, I watch more basketball. But I, I think uh, it ranks up there with the ballet. To be honest with you. Yeah. Have you ever been to the ballet, Tony? Not that I remember or not that I would admit, I think. One of those two. Have you ever seen a play in New York City? Um, like, once like in you, college, and I'm not proud of it. Like Eugene O'Neill, for example? No, I have never seen a play. I've never been to an opera. I've never been to ballet. And I'm quite certain that I'm missing a, 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 a large portion of of the culture that I really need, you know, where well, I, I, I know you like golf balls and don't cuss. Which hell, I cuss when I drop something. <laughs> well, you I, like uh, um, Cliff Notes, so I'll get the Eugene O'Neill, "The Iceman Cometh," and I guarantee you, you will like brother? it, brother. 
Jack the Brothers? Uh, it could be, but I'm, you get the cliff notes. I'm not giving any hints. You read it, and it'll take you probably half an hour, and then you tell us tomorrow on the show what you thought. And you'll love that play. Love it. All right, Max on record is here. What was the best bet record yesterday? Max, you missed <clears> one day. He missed one day. We were 3-0, and Max. Next question. Uh, Next question. I'm trying to investigate Madison Bumgarner plus a run and a half at plus a dollar for Adam tonight. Jesus. If only I could. <laughs> if only I could. <laughs> If only I could get beyond that bullpen. And, you know, my, my oldest son is a avid Diamondbacks fan, so I watch this team with him religiously, and it's just that. Yeah, the, the bull- we, we laugh at it all the time. That's a great father when you think about it. The, the Diamondbacks, the bullpen, and he supports though. his son's team. That is awesome. Yeah. Uh, well, the kid and grew and the Missouri awesome. Tigers? And the Missouri Tigers? Well, that, my youngest went to Missouri, but. You know, my kids yeah. were born in Las Vegas. There's no pro team in Las Vegas. The Diamondbacks. Yeah, it, it's kind. Of, I guess it yeah. kind of is the Diamondback. I mean, that would be like the probably the team that would be considered the local team. I don't know. Like, would you agree with that, Rob? At least, yeah. Well, yeah. There's the Dodgers so are pretty Cali- close. California yeah. teams that are yeah, close. Yeah. Well, that's why yeah. Las Vegas is blacked there's out. Dodgers, of Dodgers, right? There's more yeah. Dodgers fans. Yeah, but you can't. You can't for the longest time, you could never watch a Dodgers game out in Vegas, or it would be you really can't hard. Still. Yeah, you can't. Black, they're all blacked out, everything yeah. out there. Yeah. But when it was Bank One Ballpark in uh, Phoenix back in mm-hmm. the late 90s, and take the take my oldest son there, the kid's there. So, I mean, he just grew up that way. But, my God, when I see J.B. Bukowskis and all these guys marching, and it just, ay, 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 ay. Yeah, but the, but they're, the bullpen ERA price. was much lower has been much lower since the all-star break they've so been they... on a good yes you're absolutely right and Noe ramirez has been really good for them um if i could single one guy out of I mean, sorry has been decent he's been pretty tough and, I thought, and it, then they traded him away oh, they traded so. him yeah, yeah yeah that's right that's that's who they traded so um you're right ramirez and there's been one other guy that's that's come out and i can't remember i think bukaus just gave up the bomb last night that like put them behind the eight ball i think it's always one of them i mean even but, we make fun of joe mantiply my son and i but his numbers aren't horrendous um oh he might have been the one i was trying to think about where he just yeah, keeps coming in and getting out like his numbers have been pretty good um but boy but if they could give me one i mean i may try bum gunner tonight plus a run and a half at plus a i i, I haven't there. ruled it out yet i i it's probably if I was going to add a second, that that's probably what you know, be it. I, I got to see if I can stomach dealing with that team again after last night. But <laughs> that but, happens um, all year long with that yeah. team. The, the bullpen that stressed the most tonight is got to be Miami's. Miami, I mean, Bass has pitched three straight days. Floro yep. back to back. Bender has thrown four and yeah, five, well, and it would be back to back. That that's another reason. Um, that's why they're plus two twenty. Another reason I liked Arizona so much last night is because all those Giants relievers pitched all weekend against yeah, the yeah, Astros, yeah. but the Giants managed to to get that get it done last night and not really use any of their good relievers. So right. that that would be one thing that might keep me off yep. Arizona tonight. Is San Francisco is going to have all their top arms back? Yeah. All of a sudden, in the seventh inning, you become a $3 underdog with the Diamondbacks bullpen. (laughs) Yeah. You guys had asked about bullpen uh, ERA over the years, and you know I have this really neat database that is just Mm -hmm. omnipotent. So you have to go back. The top 22 worst bullpens in the last – since 2004, I have to go back 22 of – rankings to get to a team that was not in 2019, 2020, or 2021. Understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So the Red Sox in 2020, now this is this is bullpen run allowed because I have statistically proven that bullpen ERA is a bunch of crap. If you're in a game and a player makes an error, it's a run allowed and you're on the hook. So 3.3 runs per game by the bullpen of the Boston Red Sox last year is the number one worst bullpen on the list. Followed by the National League Rockies in 2020, 2.82. Yeah. Are you interested to know who the best is? From last year? Uh, no, since 2004. 
Oh, since 2004, best bullpen in the league, in the league since 24. Oh, oh man. 2015, Kansas City Royals. Uh, oh, it's one year. Okay. Um, boy, that's pretty good, uh, Tony Finn. That's like in the that. that's, that's 15th. Good, that's, that's 15th that out of. Um, well, think about it. I'm doing National League, American League, and. Well, uh, it probably, probably be, well, it may be a National League team um, simply because they get to face pitchers. But um, you're right; it's a National League yeah. team. And in fact, uh, the, the two top teams are National League. There you go. Here's the Braves. <laughs> the Atlanta Braves, point eight seven. Oh, really? Twenty thirteen. Yeah. Well, that's, that's because that's, their starters that's... would go eight innings. They only had to pitch an out, you know. Well, that's to their to their credit. Yeah, and then uh, you wanted to know strikeouts uh, per game, of course, with the launch angle. Twenty twenty, Tampa Bay Rays struck out an average of ten point three five times a game. It's still John, out. who was who was the second? Yes, they NL, do. Who was the second NL team? Was it the Giants? The Reds. The Reds. Red, yeah. Wow. In twenty eleven. Twenty eleven. It wasn't the Nasty Boys then. It wasn't the Nasty <coughs> Boys, yeah, 1990. <laughs> yeah, no. So, Tony Finn, you are right. The Rays hold the two top spots for most strikeouts yeah. per game yes. and the last two seasons. Then we have the Brewers in 2020 at 9.93. Uh, and, again, so I have right. to – because of this asinine launch angle. Did A-Rod use a launch angle? No. He, he did he, not he use a launch angle. He, 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 he just used steroids. steroids. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but he, he was the Charlie Lau swing. What did Charlie Lau teach? No, yeah, well, well Charlie, Charlie Lau's, uh that's that's no one teaches that. Right. No one. They should. No. Well, yeah, well, they had some My, of the best hitters ever or under the tutelage right. of Charlie Lau. Yeah. George Brett. Yes. Tony Gwynn. Rod yeah. Carew. Um, Charlie Lau was one of the best. Yeah. So now you know, I have 20, to go. Twenty home runs. Twenty home runs for George Brett was. You know, George Brett could hit forty home runs. It, it, he could hit, but it, right. Guess what? Twenty home runs. 340, 350, 20 home runs. One hundred RBIs was every year was good enough to get in the Hall of Fame. Do you think? Yeah, and that park was designed for gaps. Both yes, of those was. Missouri parks, St. Yes, Louis and Kansas City in the 80s, they were designed Speed, that way. speed, speed, speed. A lot speed. of speed. Willie Wilson. And, and Whitey Herzog was all about speed, 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 speed. Until Always. Vince Coleman got caught in the tarp. Yeah. So the team that's 2005 Billy Bean Athletics, 5.07 strikeouts per game, and that makes sense to me because that's that's what Moneyball is all about. Yeah, you get, it absolutely is. Walks, uh, station yep. to station, not stealing bases, and not giving way outs. No bunning. No bunning. Boy, and in those early 2000s, that was a thing. I mean, the Yankees yep. organizationally, they preached running up starting pitchers, pitch counts, get yep. them out of there before the sixth inning. The Red Sox used to be really good at that, but that's kind of yeah. disappeared too. You don't yeah. see these teams running up, trying to run up pitch counts anymore. What so irritates I, I what irritates me, and I have to run, guys, I, as I, you know I'm going to run, but what irritates me more than uh, a, a, a pitcher has come in, he's thrown eight straight balls, walked two, and the next guy comes up, swings at the French pitch, and rolls into double. It's like, yeah. Who's taught you anything about baseball? Have they right. taught you anything about baseball? Yeah, I, 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 Tony, I saw that happen. <laughs> I wanted to say it was either yesterday or Sunday, and it was the exact scenario. Yeah. Crazy guy, guy Absolutely six insanity. or seven straight balls. First pitch, pop up to the center fielder. No big deal. Easy out. Like, yeah, can of corn, can of corn. Yep. It's crazy. All right, before we go, Tony, uh, yes, we're going to recap the the best bets. But you have yeah, but a question. Tony give one. Tony, give oh. us one. Yeah, I didn't give sorry. One. We want Tony to give us one. You want to? You want to? You want to? You want to? Yeah, uh, and it uh, can't be. Uh, Max on record is asking you about any dating pointer pointers for his oh. nephew. So that can't <laughs> be a free pick. That yeah, cannot wants, be your free pick. Dating pointers. You want to I give him some dating pointers. Wow. Get him. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, in fact, I'll send you that book I wrote on, you know, <laughs> never mind. Maybe not for your nephew, but for you, Max. Oh, boy. Um, uh, first talk. things, first things to pick, first things to pick. And, and then my next book is How to Be Politically Incorrect <laughs> and Not Get Shot. Okay, now, so 
Three picks. Let's do this. We're gonna go yeah. with. We're gonna go with we got the it. Philadelphia Phillies for the second day in a row. Oh. Yes. Yes. We're gonna go with the Philadelphia Man. Phillies minus one and a half. Okay. At about it'll be a, you, right at least minus one hundred five, minus one ten probably is what you're gonna have to lay there. Ten um, cents. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And it's for. And I'm just going to say, I'm going to give you three reasons why. Three reasons. The third, three, first reason is we're going to look back at what the Phillies did last night in a game that they, they, they were outplayed. They should have lost. And, and we got to, you know, then they got to the Nets bullpen, and it was game, set, match after that. And then when they were able to score, well, long story short is, when they were able to, then they gave it away. Ian, do we have to go to Ian Kennedy? Uh, never mind. Um, fly ball pitchers with 95 per, 95 uh, mile per hour exit velocity, um, right there with Lee Trevino, uh, pros that puff for pars and dogs that chase cars don't last long in their profession. And, um, it, it, the Phillies are going to look back and say, you know, this was the game. That was the game that we, the Mets lost. We're two and a half games out of first place. Uh, and we're getting ready to go into a weekend series. That will be the game that when the season ends, the Phillies close. I think they close with Atlanta. The, the second, the last series is with Atlanta. Then Atlanta gets the Mets or something like that. But those three teams, the Mets, the Phillies, and the Braves, have kind of played that triangle uh, to close the season, the last three days in, in September and the first three in October. It's going to be fun. But when they win the NL East, they can look back and say, it's because of that night that and because I think they're going to start hitting the ball better. I think they're going to bunch hits. I think they're going to be more productive, more responsible with the bat, uh, at less harperish. And the second variable that is that the that that Wheeler is the better pitcher. Um, and while that's not that's not um, the end all to winning baseball games. It is when you look at what Corbin has done. Let's, first off, Corbin's career um, is on the backside uh, of a steep slipper slide, uh, a wet and wild ride. And look at his last. Look at July. He has not struck out. He's not. He has not equaled the number of strikeouts Pernings pitched or exceeded them. And for the most part, early this year, even being pedestrian, he at least once or twice equaled. His innings pitched or exceeded. He struck out nine in a game. My point is this: he's striking out two and three batters right now in six innings. And, and his exit velocity, his hard contact, his his quality contact is hard contact. Um, the quality goes to the hitter, and he's not the same guy. He doesn't miss enough bats. That five. Listen, first of all, the five seven eight ERA he owns is isn't that bad. It's four five. I think it's a four five four. Uh, XFIP, but and while there's some positive regression, it's not against the Phillies. It's not against the Phillies, and it's not going to be better than four or five. Uh, Corbin, Corbin now is the ace. If you look at the depth charts, he's the ace of the Washington Nationals, who really are are in the last thirty days. Believe it or not, guys, they've hit the ball pretty well. But they've traded away some guys now. Their pitching is horrendous in the bullpen, and their starting pitching is either injured or uh, or somewhere lost in, on the farm, and they can't find them. This Washington team will absolutely be a play against. There's four or five teams that are play against. The Phillies are a play on. And if it's Corbin against Wheeler, it's minus one and a half. It, it's it, it, all things equal. If these teams are played just average baseball tonight, the Phillies win by five. I love it. There you go. There Absolutely you go. love it. So and I got it going. Have... I really, I really appreciate the uh, the opportunity to uh, to um, speak well, about Dave. Say, Albert, we're gonna, we're really gonna be like done in a minute. We're gonna All be right, done okay. in a minute. All right. Listen, so your your free your pick. Yep. yep. And Rob, what was your free pick? But let me just say that. The Phillies have had a game like last night three times in the last seven days. Last Monday, Gene Segura hits a home run in the bottom of the ninth off Brad Hand, and I'm thinking that might be the game they look back at. 
Then yeah. they lose two games in a row. They come back the second game of a seven-inning doubleheader. They're getting beat 7 nothing in the third inning. They come all the way back and win an extra innings. And I'm thinking, wow, that might be the game. Then you know yeah. what they do? They go out and they lose two more games. And then yeah. they come back last night and do it all over again. It's crazy. They've had three of those games. In seven days, what a what a talk about a, a roller coaster team, Jesus. Yeah. If they didn't well, win they, those games, guys, if they didn't save their necks with those three games, and those are save your neck games, they <clears throat> they're seven games out right now. They they're not even close. I want to throw in one really quickly, and I know this I'm the one that has to go, but I want to throw this in too. I'm going to throw in a, a double dip free pick. I'm going to oh, throw nice. in. Nice. Yeah, I'm going to throw in. I'm going to do this, and this is based on. A lot of things. Max Fried has struggled with his curveball, his best pitch this year. Okay, and much of it has to do with guess what? The sticky. Stuff. Uh, he got he got hurt early in the season too, and he hurt a hamstring, and we mm-hmm. all and he really worked on his release point, and then <laughs> he came back and was re- it was really strong. Um, and if you look at him, he gets a St. Louis Cardinals team that can't hit. I don't care what you say. They, they can't bunch three hits together if their life depended on it. And they bring Lester in. And they, they actually right. – do you do you actually right. buy yeah. in? Are you a, If you're a Cardinals fan out there right now, are you buying that this front office thought that Lester and Hap were going to be right. able to put them over the hump? Sure, not I'll, tell you what, huh? I'll tell you what a hump those two – you know, you know what I'm going to say. And that is – here it is. The price on this is stupid. A buck twenty-five, a buck thirty on and my what? Don't look now. Atlanta's three and a half games out of first yeah. place. Yeah. Yep. Don't look now. They're not the healthiest team, but don't look now. Uh, Ian Anderson has the best spin rate still, not using tack in baseball, and he's a young kid who can pitch. They can pitch, and even without their best player, they've done what they needed to do during the the break to to. You know, to stay competitive with a bat, too. Don't look now. Tony, 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 real quick before you leave, because I wanted to ask you this from the time we started the show and I forgot. Okay. Max Freed. Yes. How come every single time this guy has a turn in the rotation, they fade this guy or they don't bet him? I'm looking at that line this morning saying, holy shit, they won't bet Max Freed again with John Lester on the mound. Why are they so dead set against this guy? It's funny you ask that because I had a conversation with the beat writer this morning uh, mm-hmm. about this very thing, and that is two things. First off, they'll bet him. If you ask the weekend warrior right now who John Lester is and you ask who Max Fried is, you, you will be shocked how many people don't know who Max Fried is. But Sharps Public. do. Well, Sharps do, and the Sharps will keep this on. But for the most part, the books have also – played into this where if you look at the opening number on this listen i'm opening max freed and lester i don't care that it's bush uh, and and look atlanta they hit listen this isn't the same atlanta team as last year or the year before who were abysmal right. against left-handed hitting look at what they've done this year it's been it's it has not been uh, it hasn't been you know uh, white Sox like but over the last couple of years they can hit left-handers and they can certainly hit John Lester. And that reason only is the, the talking to this beat writer who's a gambler and has, does does some work with books is that that's Max first off Max has not been his curveball. He listen, he outperformed his peripherals to some degree last year. I called him the best left, left-hander in baseball last year and he was. He was the you look at his numbers, he was the best. But his curveball, his spin rate on his curve, his best pitch, he's just started to trust it again. Because it hasn't been the same. It hasn't been that that it has not been that knockout pitch uh, that he that he had in parts of uh, nineteen uh, when he's coming and twenty last year. It just hasn't been. So that said, I think it's a steal tonight. And if you're playing, if if Lester's involved in your card, it better be a fade. That's my opinion. Yeah, no, I agree totally. I just can't. Yeah. I was always wondering why. When these lines yeah. open up, money goes against Max Fried or not. Yeah. I, I thought maybe he was a victim of the spider attack, and people thought that. But, you know, well, and, and, you and know. Atlanta, real quick, we just talked about, or you did talk about how St. Louis shows their clubhouse, hey, we've got J.A. Happen. Just, <laughs> Atlanta went out and got everybody under the sun. They made like That's seven right. different moves because That's they right. feel like they've got a chance. So at least yeah. their clubhouse is 
You know what, John? I didn't give us anything to contribute to this best bet, but I'm going to piggyback on Atlanta with Tony so you can count yeah, me in. Yeah. I, just, yeah. I don't see why. You know, I just I kept I thinking there's got to be something health wise wrong oh. with Freed for nobody to bet him. Yeah. But well, he, listen, if you look at what is his last start, I, I, don't know, I glanced at his his uh, his game log and he's got some really uh, I think he was I think he put seven shot out of his last game, didn't he? I don't know what yes, it was. But I, that's what I remember. He's yeah. had good starts. Oh, yeah. If this curveball is working, listen, guys, his his rotation last year or 2020 was the was was Kershaw was Kershaw's rookie uh, ro- uh, RPMs? You know his his spin rate. Now I think we all know that that uh, all that spin rate, even Kershaw, everybody who has a spin rate like Bowers is using something to gain an edge. And I don't I don't begrudge players for trying to gain an edge over professional hitters, not at all. But I do begrudge I do. Uh, blame them if they bitch about that rule being enforced now all of a sudden too. You you can't you can't you know you can't have it both ways. So right, right, right. Uh, there you oh, go. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Max Freed it is. So I guess Max my Freed. turn here to wrap things up for us uh real quick Where's Max Andy? on record. He, he, this? Uh, he had to go potty. Oh wow. I, yeah. I, for that. I think that's what he said. Or he's buying pot, or he's going to get uh-huh. going to the potty, or something both. like that. Or I'll both. ask him. I'll ask him after the show. Pottery. Bar. Where's Andy at? Where's he live at? Andy, where's Andy uh, from? Adam is New Brunswick. Anywhere from Hollywood, Florida, to like just, New York, just in New York State, Schenectady. Schenectady. Okay. Uh, he's up next to to uh, the. The horse races coming up that uh, mm-hmm. they're going on right now. The horse yeah, races Saratoga, right? Saratoga. What a beautiful, what a great place, place Saratoga, Lake yeah. George, that area right now. Uh, beautiful right now, absolutely perfect. You know. Yeah. Yep. We used yeah. to vacation there every year. My parents yeah. would take us there. Great place. Yeah. So to recap, uh, what Max on record is asking, he. Okay. Obviously, uh, one of the guys that knew, I said that on the show, that Xander Shoffley and uh, Paul Casey were my two guys that I thought would win the Olympic gold. Mm -hmm. What I should have done, guys, is remember when I said, oh, this is unlikely that uh, those two and Roy McIlroy could be leading after the second round. However, Shoffley led after the second round and never looked back. So I would have never made that bet. I I don't you could have told me he was leading at the second round and it wouldn't have made sense to me. But to answer the question, it was twenty to one, and uh, just a little bit more than than pizza money. I guess it was probably more like three pizzas and a tip. So that was a good one. That one came out of nowhere. Um, and then I just got this actually sent over to me, and I hope you guys don't mind me saying this, but um, they're running a special deal in my NFL. So apparently, I haven't read this yet, but um, I think Matt Josephs was number one in the NFL. Or college football. Uh, what does it say here? Okay, so he and I are, are tandem here. Yeah, I did that last uh, year. I did that with uh, Vegas Chris, LV Chris and I. Yeah, well, that's a good combination. And I think this is a good combination. I'm honored to there be with go. Matt Josephs. So yeah. what's it say here? But right now you get both for only five ninety nine, mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, I'd have to say that's a pretty good deal. Yep. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so I hope uh, I can hit 65% again. Uh, like I did last year, we know that that's hard to do, and I got very, very hot the last six weeks, like hotter than I think I've ever been in my entire life, to be completely honest. I started out two and six in the NFL, two and six. Well, that's that's reco- listen, we got we got like we got like eighteen thousand weeks of the NFL now this year. It's going to be mm-hmm. you know, it's one more one more uh, week for uh, Las Vegas Chris not to sleep. Well, right, so I look at it. I still uh, there's a column uh, there's a column somewhere in the next week or two. Uh, what happens? The week seventeen is actually just week sixteen part two. Now I I'm just not certain. It's you know it's might be revenues. It's here's the deal. I it's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. What was said? What the NFL commissioner said about game seventeen? Do I need to quote him? Yes, please. Yes, 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 yes. Would you like me to quote him on this? Okay, yes, this, yes this, this, because this my, I'm doing a. Uh, by the way, everyone, I'm doing a. Uh, I'm doing a, a, a daily a daily column. 
NFL camps. I'm taking all the beat writers, all the notes, and it'll be published in uh, the news. I, I'm, I started yesterday, but I, you guys, it's your fault I didn't get it done, so I'm doing it today. I have to turn it in still. That said, quoting. Let's quote him. Yep. Okay, right? All right, let me quote. find it. Quote. Okay, is here it, it is. Yep. Is this Mr. Goodell you're speaking of? Yes, it is. This, that's, uh, that's right. He, he, most he, intelligent he, human being on the planet. It's good to be king. It is good to be king. And uh, yeah, so here's, by those guys. Here's, <laughs> or a puppet gonna, among owners. I'm right. trying to find this. I've got to find this quote, sir. Okay, here it goes. Because I put I'm put it I put it in the call. Here, okay, here we go. Oh, here we go. Here it is. Okay. Okay. So it isn't a secret. It isn't a secret, first of all, that I am not a Mr. King Goodell groupie. I am not a groupie. I'm not a fan. <laughs> I he, thought that was he, a quote. He, he reinforced <laughs> no. He reinforced the fact when, when he told the media uh, following the, the ratification of the CBA in March that quote, "This is a monumental moment in NFL history." The CBA, with the players and the recently completed media agreements, provide the foundation for us to enhance the quality of the NFL experience for our fans. And one of the benefits of each team playing 17 regular season games is the ability for us to go out and continue to grow our game around the world. And this was said when I think we'd lost about two, three, four million people uh, to COVID. But this is a monumental moment in NFL history. We've added Week seventeen, it's embarrassing. Wow, embarrassing. he's outdone himself. He's outdone himself. Um, yeah, but it's hard to hate him and not the thirty-two wow. owners along with him, though. No, oh yeah, no. Listen, I don't. It hates. It takes way too much energy to hate. Or I don't hate. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't. Agree, yeah, right. Dislike. But I certainly don't agree, and I don't. And he's not a guy. Listen, Roger Goodell is one of the few guys. If he offered to buy me a beer, I'm not certain I would accept. <laughs> And that's, but that's you, saying a lot for me. But he may he may order the beer and then look to you to pay because he only yeah. makes forty six million a year being the puppet of the owners. Listen, if it's tequila, yeah. you're not passing, Tony. Well, that I would listen. No, oh, not, right, not the right kind of tequila. If it's, it's the right America. kind of tequila, and a ticket Rob, to, a ticket you to just found out that Dave Roberts is to Tony Finn as Roger Goodell is to John Ryan. So we, we try to not mention Roger Goodell too much this fall, okay? Well, they boo him relentlessly, all 32 picks in the first listen, round every year. Calling, listen, calling the ratification of a CBA, of a collective bargaining agreement between millionaire employees right. and billionaire owners, yep. a monumental moment in NFL in history is embarrassing. It's a bit of an embellishment. Oh, just a bit, just a little oh. bit. Yeah. All right. So to recap, we have the Phillies, we have the Marlins, we have the Atlanta Braves as our three best bets. We'll look to go six and zero tonight. And uh, thank you guys for your time. We'll be back here tomorrow at four o five Eastern Standard Time for the Manny's Irish Pub Predicted Playbook. So on behalf of Tony Finn, Rob Vino, myself, WagerTalk.com, dot com, May all the wins be yours.